Hello, welcome to the Owatonna Today Show. I am your host, Francie Hall, and this is your Community Connection. Today's show, we are going to be speaking with Kelly Moss from Ecumen Brooks and Countryside, and we're talking about pre-planning assisted living options. It's a really important topic, and she's got a, got a lot of really good information for you. Then after that, Leanne and I last week um, took a little field trip over to the Owatonna Gymnastics Club. They're celebrating their 40th anniversary. They're having an open house coming up. So we got to see some kids doing some amazing gymnastics and learn more about the Owatonna Gymnastics Club. Join us for that. First, it is Friday, and that means that it is the day that we set aside to thank our sponsors. We want to thank them every day and especially today. So. Our premier sponsors are City of Owatonna, Express Employment Professionals, Owatonna Public Utilities, and United Way of Steel County. Thank you. Our primary, spon primary sponsors are Amy Swain Hearing Centers, Brookdale Senior Living Solutions, Little Theater of Owatonna, and the Owatonna Foundation. Thank you. Our interlude sponsors are Abraham Consulting Technologies, Bremer Bank, Brenda Bednar Mortgage Office, Glenn Mager and Michael Mager of the Brick Mager Funeral Home and Medford Funeral Home, Carlson Brandstad and Company, CPAs, ERA Gillespie Real Estate, Horizon Eye Care, Fairview Animal Medical Center, Clancher and Son Landscaping and Concrete, Owatonna Business Incubator, Steel County Historical Society, Steel County Transitional Housing, The Third Hand Video Productions, and TPS Insurance. We hope that you will support these fine Owatonna businesses that support our show and do so many good things for our community. We can continue this show because of them. Um, also, we're always looking for more supporters of the show. So if there is an activity or event you want to sponsor or you, you just believe that this is a very valuable show for our community, please do give us a call. Um, you can call Leanne at 390-5751 and she'll talk to you about sponsorship opportunities. Stay with us after a word from our sponsors. We'll be right back with Kelly Moss and we're going to be talking about pre-planning our assisted living options. I'm Dan Branstead of Carlson Branstead and Company, certified public accountants. We support the Oatana Today Show. Oatana Public Utilities, real people, real reliable, real progress. Making life a little easier day after day. Taking pride in our community, listening to what you say. A voice you can talk to. We're growing with you. With you in mind and everything we do. Oatana Public Utilities. Greetings from the Steele County Historical Society. We invite you to visit us and enjoy your county's history at the History Center and Village of Yesteryear. Check our website for current exhibits and monthly programs. Welcome back to the Owatonna Today Show. We are joined by Kelly Moss. Hello, Kelly. Hello. And you are with Ecumen Brooks and Countryside, is I that am. right? Yes. Um, Kelly, what do you do? For them. I am a sales and marketing manager for both of the buildings. My role is to be in the community, to uh, up awareness, and to uh, have people fill and be in our buildings. Okay, all right. Well, I when you know when I read a little bit about this process that we're going to be talking about, this kind of pre-planning or looking into the assisted living options that are available, it made so much sense to me. I mean, before I would Absolutely. not have thought about it. Um, but it makes a lot of sense. So we're talking about what? We're talking about seniors educating themselves on the next stage. So there, there comes a point for seniors, they are comfortable in their homes, and something happens, a fall, uh, a fracture, um, uh, getting sick, and they haven't planned ahead on what the next option could be. They happen to have that fall. They end up in, at the doctor and end up in, say, for example, CODA for mm -hmm. some short-term rehab. And the doctor says, you can't go home. And there's been no uh, arrangements made. And um, this senior who is not up to their normal strength has, doesn't know where to go. Mm -hmm. And so when I started working at Ecumen, one of the goals that I had was to have seniors educate themselves mm -hmm. so that they could see the, the communities and uh, have control of where they want to go. I think that's a huge, huge word there, control. Right. 
Um, because, you know, uh, none of us want to leave our homes. Absolutely not. No, nobody wants to, hey, I think I'm going to go just leave my home. You've been there. You want to stay there. Right. But what happens? Cri crisis situation. Right. You lose the ability to make decisions for yourself. And that is one thing that is uh, so difficult for seniors who have had so much control over their lives this long and they end up breaking a hip and then it's up to their children or even a county worker to make the decision of where they're going to spend the next stage of their life. And that's, that's difficult for many seniors. Not only are moves very stressful, uh, but then when you add to they don't know where they're going, mm -hmm. they don't have a say in where they're going, um, and then to move and pack up all of their belongings, the whole thing is extremely stressful, which therefore makes healing uh, that much harder mm -hmm. and adjustment. Yeah, adjustment would be a big, big problem. Mm, yes. there, we in Owatonna and in Sill County, we have a lot of options we um, do. for what, what are the contingent, continuance, uh, continuum of care here? It's assisted living, independent living, but support, I don't know, what are all of these things? But we've got a lot of... We do. We actually have many different communities within Otana. So um, you look at places that offer independent senior living, which that could be a co-op, such as Morehouse Place or Real Life. Uh, then you um, go to independent or assisted living, which is what um, uh, Park Place, Ecumen Countryside, the Brooks, uh, Traditions, we offer these options where you can live very independently, come and go as you please. Uh, basically, it's your home. You mm -hmm. can drive and do what you need to do, but there are services that are available in these communities when you need it. So as I need it, let's say I'm fine, I'm independent, and then, then I kind of get to the point where I do need a little bit of assistance. Maybe you need a little help with um, a, a shower once a week. Maybe you just need to have somebody there in the apartment. You can still shower. Maybe you just need someone there so you have some reassurance so that you don't fall. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it could look like uh, having some medication management. You just need a little help with taking care of all those meds. Yeah, all those meds, yeah. All when those to take meds. them and have I taken them? And mm -hmm. Right, have I taken them? Um, maybe I take them just fine and I just need somebody to set up a pill box for me or someone to order those meds for me. Mm -hmm. Those are all options that we can provide. Mm -hmm. um, so you can live either very independently or you have services when you need it. This can help to not have to move again. Mm -hmm. Now, there isn't, um, there isn't any guarantee that you're not gonna have to go into, say, a, a specialty care at some point. But when you're looking at what your options are, you are looking at a co-op, assisted living, independent living. Uh, you could uh, be looking at a couple different moves within the next, say, 10 years. Mm -hmm. And when you're 80, to 90, three moves could be a lot. Oh, that's a, that's a lot for anybody. Right. That's a lot for anybody. What precipitates this? I know, you know, we've talked with so many people on the show and then just in the community, we know as we get older that we do, um, we have, are at risk for falling and that falling yes. is kind of like the number one risk um, for, for senior citizens in terms Absolutely. of either seriously injuring themselves and having to go into a, a care facility or even dying. And so... I loved what you said again. I want to go back to that control. Right. So if you know you, can, you don't plan to fall and become incapacitated, um, but what? So what? What do you advise people to do if you know if they they're, they're, people are hesitant to check it out? But what can they do to check these places out? And what's the process? I would ask everyone to come in and to have a tour. Come in and have lunch with me. Then you can, ha you can see what the food tastes like. You can see the community. You can meet some of the other people who live there. We had a firsthand experience of what this place feels like. Mm -hmm. uh, then tour the next community. Find the community that feels appropriate and that feels like home. And we're saying community. What you mean is, of course, the, the, the housing. Exactly. The, right. I, I, we all refer to the Brooks and Countryside as a community. And it, and it is a community. Yes. So. It's, its, own, it's its own family. But these are communities within the communities where mm -hmm. you can live when you have, um, when you need a little bit of extra. Right. Or to plan in advance because if you have an illness already and you know it's going to progress, 
Yeah, take care of yourself. Don't wait until uh, things get to the point where you can't control the outcome. One of the one of the great things that that I see that is available is we offer waiting lists mm -hmm. and come in, you decide that this is a this is a place that you feel comfortable. Be on the waiting list. It doesn't cost anything. Uh, as long as you don't mind having me call and ask if you're ready, mm -hmm. um, then you can be made aware of when openings are coming. So that's a question you said, if, if I don't mind that you call. Um, under what circumstances do you call? Is it just because something has come open so you start at the top of the list? That is, okay. that is, that is usually what I do. I also call to say, would you like to come in and attend some of our activities? Being that you're on our waiting list, you have the option. Come in and have lunch with us, attend our chair exercises, or come in and, and experience some of our entertainment. Mm -hmm. You have options within, um, within that time frame that you're waiting. Mm -hmm. Come in and get familiar with the community. How long do you think it takes people, um, you know, to, um, between the time that, you know, they've maybe come and checked one of these places out to the time that they might actually need or come, come into the facility? That is always a hard question mm -hmm. because it really depends on the individual. We have people who are on our waiting list and have never needed mm -hmm. to have assisted living, but they've stayed aware and on top of what we have for openings. There are others that, with need, that need it within the next six months. Winter plays a large part. A lot of people want to be- Winter, mm -hmm, yeah. Play, want to be placed and want to feel home, at home somewhere when the snow starts to fly. Sure. So that can that can speed up a time frame. So six months uh, could be an average time of sitting on a wait list. That's for someone who knows that they're going to need some to, to yeah. be somewhere right away. So if I uh, if I've toured all the places in town, and because I want to stay in town, and I I see I feel that one is you know I feel more at home there. Of course I feel more at home in my home, but I feel of all these places as options. I feel mm -hmm. more at home in one. If I'm on the waiting list. Um, does what kind of how does that help me? Okay. Like, what do I uh, might do? I get preferential treatment, or what? Sure. I mean, something happens to me, and I'm on a waiting list. Sure. Um, I've fallen. What if, happens if you have fallen and broken your hip, and you are now at Coda? Have one of your loved ones call me right away and say, um, "Mom has just fallen. Um, can you please?" Um, find, can we find out her date? How, where are we sitting on the wait list? And what I will do is, depending on that date that they've entered into our agreement to be on the wait list, that will speed things up. Okay. Um, because I have this waiting list, and there's people that don't need it. So I may get into that home environment so quicker and get out of the uh, yes. nursing home and get into the place that I've toured and that I feel more comfortable in. Yeah, because okay. you have been on that waiting list. And again, there's no cost. Is there a cost? There is no cost to be on our waiting list. No cost. Okay. Um, there are so many places in the community you can go, but Kelly, thank you for being here um, for, for Ecumen and Brooks and Countryside. Who, what's your phone number? Can they call you? 507-461-9277. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank I really you. appreciate it. We hope appreciate that you um, enjoyed this and got some good information. Do stay with us because we are taking a field trip to the Owatonna Gymnastics Club next after word from our sponsors. Hi, I'm Mike Bath, General Manager of the Napa Distribution Center and 2015 Corporate Campaign Leader for United Way of Steele County. Every dollar donated during this year's United Way campaign is an investment in the future of our county. Our goal this year is to raise $670,000 to create a stronger, healthier community where everyone has the opportunity to meet their basic life needs and reach their full potential. It takes all of us pulling together to meet our common goals. And thank you for doing your part to support United Way of Steele County by giving from the heart to this year's campaign. The majority of fatal home fires happen at night when people are sleeping. Smoke alarms give you time to escape. We recommend that you have a smoke alarm in every sleeping room of the house and on every floor in the common living areas. 
Smoke alarms should be tested monthly and batteries should be replaced at least once a year. This is a safety tip from the Otana Fire Department. Hello, I'm Glenn Mager. And I'm Michael Mager with the Brick Mager Funeral Home and the Medford Funeral Home. At Brick Mager, we are privileged to have served the families of Steele County community for 118 years. Whether you choose traditional burial or cremation, we promise the tribute your loved one deserve with the peace of mind that you require. We are proud to be part of the Owatonna Today Show. Hi, this is Barry Gillespie, president of ERA Gillespie Real Estate, where our pledge is to save you money, save you time, and simplify your life. And we're proud supporters of the Oatana Today Show. The Oatana Foundation's mission is to support community progress, and the Foundation has been doing just that since 1958 in the Oatana community. By issuing over $11 million in grants, the Oatana Foundation has helped organizations fulfill their goals in the areas of community, recreation, the arts, and education. Please consider a tax-deductible donation, a memorial, or possibly including the foundation in your estate planning so that together we can continue to make a positive, lasting impact in our community. Preserving the past, building the present, funding the future, that is what your Oatana Foundation is all about. Welcome back to the Oatana Today Show, your community connection. I'm your host, Francie Hall, and Leanne and I are here at the Owatonna Gymnastic, Gymnastics Club. Say that, I can't, it's a tongue twister, which makes perfect sense. And I'm here with Tom Smith and Afton Bolin, and we are going to be talking about the 40th anniversary of the Owatonna Gymnastics Club. That's a lot of years. You have not been here that whole time. I have not, nope. I was a gymnast here for about 15 years, and then I went on to college, so... Yeah, I think that was right about 2010 when I left here, and now I'm back. Okay, and let's find out what both of you do. Afton, what do you do here with the Otana Gymnastics Club? I'm the rec director here at the Gymnastics Club. So basically I supervise and coach all the um, classes from preschool on all the way up until intermediates, which is the step right before Tom's teams. Okay, well, that's a segue right over to Tom. So, Tom, please tell us about what your involvement with this club is. All right, I came here back about nine years ago. Um, I started out in Northfield, and what I do here is I run the t competitive team program. Uh, competitive team program can consist of kids age five all the way up through high school. Um, most of the high school kids that do stay with our program are from schools that don't offer the actually gymnastics for the high, high school sport. So they are, they're able to stay club probably through 12th grade. Um, otherwise, this is a main feeder for us. It's our competitive program. I'm also the head high school coach here in town. Um, and all our high school gymnasts usually have come up through this club. Okay, and so let's talk about real quick here. Um, I want to get the, uh, what the difference is between the high school and what they do and what we do here. But let's, before we go f too far in, let's tell people about when this event is. So tell us about this acti that event that's coming up tomorrow, Saturday. This is going to be tomorrow, yep. It starts at 11 o'clock, and what it is is it's 40 years. The Owatonna Gymnastics Club has been around in Owatonna at different, numerous places for the past 40 years, and this is our 40th year, so we thought we would celebrate with this big reunion. Uh, we're going to open up the gym. I believe we're going to have some food for people to come, looked at, look at our gym, look at what pos possibilities we have for their sons and daughters, and I do say sons because we do have a lot of guy gymnasts also in our program. Uh, biggest thing is with this, with gymnastics, it offers so much for all kids. You know, I'm not, I don't care if they're planning to go become this big gymnastics star, even if they pl plan on going to hockey, uh, dance, football. Gymnastics at a young age is great for all kids, just because it teaches them balance, it teaches them strength, and it's just not arm strength, leg strength. This is total body strength, and that's what makes it so good for any little girl, little boy, you know, planning on to be in some sport future, in their future. And people at this event will be able to, can you tell us a little bit more, Afton, about what's going on at this um, open house that's taking place tomorrow? Absolutely. Um, we are going to have some, like Tom said, we're going to have some food. We're going to have all of our coaches here. We're also going to have some of our team gymnasts that you see behind us. They're going to be also doing some um, more demonstrations, and they're going to be every half an hour. And that way the kids can see um, 
what maybe they can learn in the future here at OGC. And we're also going to have little things like face painting. And we are actually getting brand new blocks for our foam pit, which is kind of a crowd favorite for all gymnasts. And basically, it's just a squishy pit full of blocks. And um, we're getting brand new ones. And so we're going to offer, if you spend um, a little bit of money, you're going to be able to decorate your own, which kind of puts your mark in the pit, too. So we can sponsor a foam block. Absolutely. Is that it? Absolutely, yep. Okay. So I heard you say, Tom, and, and this makes such perfect sense, that gymnastics is a great foundation for any sport. So whether they're planning on being big superstars or not, it's a really good thing. And also, what about the mental capacity? Because I know that kids, when they're young, part of the ways we learn and grow is the crawling and the being thrown in the air and all of that stuff. Um, that's true. I mean, I'm, a, I'm also a teacher at... Uh, um, McKinley Elementary, and I do teach physical education, and it's a, a proven fact that physical activity does help um, kids learn. Um, a lot of testing that we do at the school right now, the uh, teachers will take them out running or whatever to stimulate the brain, and that's what this activity does. Um, with gymnastics, they, they really have to learn to focus, concentrate, especially when you're, you're seeing some of the skills that are done, being done behind us. They have to focus on what they're doing, and um, without totally folks and you know th there's a chance that they get and get hurt but as we teach them we we teach them basic fundamentals up through like I said what you're seeing behind us right now I know I'm having trouble focusing because I really do want to just look behind me and see what these kids are doing it's been amazing what are some of the basic like where do kids start out what are the basic things they're learning first some of the basic things we like to teach them is really the roles like a somersault what a lot of people call them so a forward roll, backwards roll, um, really starting to get used to the equipment because I mean these are things that they're not seeing just every day. You're not seeing um, uneven bars, you're not seeing a high beam and so this is teaching them more of the coordination and then um, also more cartwheels, handstands because once you can get the basic fundamentals of smaller skills then just the bigger skills pile on to that. And eventually, it really is more of a confidence thing. Once you can get a good grasp on those smaller skills, then you'll be able to know what your body can do. It's really uh, knowing your body and knowing the motions it can do. Knowing where to place those hands. I don't know, Leanne, whether you can get the girl who's doing these handstands and walking, but um, geez, Louise, they have springs in their legs, too. Is this floor um, somehow supported with something that makes it more bouncy? Yep. Uh, yeah, it is. It's a. It's called a Lexan floor right now, and what it is is there is about 52 boards on the floor, and each board has anywhere from, I believe, 36 to 42 springs on it. Um, the springs are probably five, six inches tall, and what that does is it helps them recoil, and that's why sometimes you'll see they can get a lot of height. But again, it's the quickness of the gymnast. If they're tumbling slow, they're not going to use the floor is not going to help them as much as somebody that really has a lot of power, snaps through their legs. It really pushes them a lot higher into the air. Um, there's one girl now going right. I can see doing a double back in the air, two flips in the air before she lands. And again, it's it's power, it's speed, but that's all brought up through rec classes. It's teaching kids you got to go harder and harder. So um, that's what that's what the floor does to you. Okay, so don't try this at home because it's not going to be nearly as springy. So it could hurt. Yeah, don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what are some of the, the things that you personally teach here? I am a coach of all of our rec classes. So each day I could coach a different um, class. So I have a lot of my own preschool classes. Um, I have intermediates. I also help and shadow coaches so then they can learn to coach them as well. And um, I'm a training team coach, which is the step right past our intermediates. And then also I help out Tom for our competition team. So, okay, And do you both, are you both hands on? I see that there are people behind that are, what are they doing when they're helping that child um, turn over or whatever? It's, it's called spotting. And what it is, is it's just helping them, you know, giving a little budge where they can go up and flip the twice or a little bump where we start twisting them but eventually they learn how to do it and that's how most of them start you know with just a small little bump they maybe do just a half turn and then you know eventually they're doing full turns so uh, I've seen it behind me and, there, and someone was doing a, just a, an amazing turn they jumped up and they did some turn and he touched them is so you must have a fair amount of experience to know how to spot as well 
Yeah, I, I've been coaching for, I believe, 27 years. Um, one of the aspects that we have in this gym right now is we've got a, a pit over here. It's filled with uh, 3,000 foam blocks. Um, girls can land in there and land safely. So a lot of times they can, they can learn on their own. Um, another thing you can see in the corner is we've got tramps. You know, a lot of kids have tramps at home and their parents will go buy them, but they don't know how to bounce on them. Uh, we, we teach them how to bounce, how to land, how to so that they do not bounce off the tramp. We have all be safe. Yes. We also have what's called a tumble track. It's a 26 foot tramp where they can actually tumble on it and they can learn that the skills that they're doing behind us right now. They can learn that on the tumble track before they bring it to floor. And then we've got one more device. It's called a rod floor. Again, it's actually springer than the floor that the kids are tumbling on now. That really gives them a lot more height. And again, we've got that going into that big foam block pit, which is, uh, you know, the, the equipment that we have is, you know, about what the top gymnasts in the state or, you know, the ones training for the Olympics have. So, so it's really a, a, just a high-quality place that you, you would see at any really – High, high quality facility. So um, thank you so much for inviting us. This is so fun, and I can't wait to just stay and watch a little bit more. And I hope that you all come on Saturday, that's tomorrow, and watch uh, the demonstrations, get your face painted, have some food. It is what time? 11 to 2. 11 to 2. So come back then. And in the meantime, stay with us after a word from our sponsors. Amy Swain Hearing Centers is a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show. I'm Dr. Amy Swain, and I want everyone to hear better. I'm Deb Gillard. And I'm Sean McNulty with Brookdale Owatonna Senior Living Solutions. We are assisted living and Alzheimer's and dementia care communities here in Owatonna, and formerly known as Claire Bridge and Sterling House. And we are proud sponsors of the Owatonna Today Show. Welcome back. We are your Community Connection and here are your community announcements for this week. Um, tonight at the football game there will be t-shirts, special t-shirts being given away by the Owatonna Foundation for Foundation Week. And then tomorrow on Saturday be sure to head over to the Owatonna Foundation across the street from Central Park from 8 to noon to learn more about what's going on there with the foundation. Um, also on Saturday is a 5K Run Walk Spirit Run. For more information about that, call 446-2302. And again on Saturday, Alina is going to be collecting gently used or new bikes for kids who need bicycles. So go buy Alina with your bike um, to donate at uh, between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. The Art Center is holding a luncheon on Wednesday, October 14th at noon. Certified chef from Spare Time Entertainment will be providing a three-course meal, three meal, and uh, Luann Kalpa will be there as well. Call 451-0533 for more information. Thank you so much for joining us. Do come back and join us again next week when our guests will be Survivor Sisters Breast Cancer Support Group, a trip to the Foreigner Play, um, and an update from our Owatonna Police Department, Owatonna Business Woman Leadership Workshop information, Southern, Southeastern Minnesota Initiative Foundation update, and Feed My Starving Children Owatonna Pack. Join us then.